Good morning, everyone. Welcome to our Tuesday morning trading room. Hang on here one second while I get you my monitor. We can see what's going on. So the market's just opened up. <clears throat> Pardon me. Looks like there was a little bit of a opening gap to the downside here on the NASDAQ this morning. We can take a look. Uh, the overnight, relatively quiet, so the market left off way up here around uh, 43.70, give or take. Declined somewhat through the overnight, but here we are opening. We've got this big open gap above us. It's hard to say when you get a gap that size, whether it's going to be an acceleration gap lower or whether the market's actually going to try to get in there. Technically, the market does try to get into the gap a lot of times. It doesn't necessarily need to fill today. It might fill in the next day or two. But what I'm seeing is that the market is in a decline, and now we got a little bit of a bear flag type thing going on. And we may actually end up with a breakout to the short side. Still early though, a little bit too early to get crazy. The Hawk also trying to get a little bit more bullish here. A lot of yellow bars. We did get a first micro macro cross signal over here. It looks as though it did hit its profit objective. Let's see whether or not the market can stay below here. Crude oil also looking a little bit bearish today. Here's crude oil on the Eagle. Got a nice green bar sell here out of the open. And you see we kind of have that similar kind of look here where we have that bear flag type setup and then the market heading lower from here. Another retracement into the hard edge I think might be plausible I would see the market trading somewhere around 4440 4450 if the hard edge continues to hold I would be interested in selling that Okay, so we're about four or five minutes into the opening session. And we are getting a trend change signal here on the Falcon. All right, I might put a onesie on just to see whether or not we're actually going to go somewhere. Can I risk that? Yes, I can. Oops. It's a little bit late on the trigger there. The market just bounced past me. But good news is I got a chance at a second push on the entry. And now that I know the current limit of the market, with the second push entry, what we do is we allow the signal to engage. And then we look to see where the reaction comes. So I might have caught a little bit of a lucky break there. As I mentioned uh, the last few days, I'm certainly a more comfortable shorting the NQ than I am buying it because I do believe that, at least from the look of the, the daily chart, which is a, would be considered a long-term chart as far as the, uh, the intraday trading goes, the daily chart does have a distinctively bearish tone to it. All right, 
so we can cancel that. And here we are with the eagle producing yet another green bar cell. Technically, I suppose you could consider this a rule of three, one, two, three signals against the hard edge. The problem is I don't see a real good retest of the extreme. It does look as though the market's going to try to get into that opening gap. Oh, and I was watching for this red bar buy. This red bar buy signal I figured would be a good attempt to buy. Why? Well, because as far as the trading range goes, we're at the bottom end of the trading range as the signal develops. All right, so if we're going to expect support, this is probably a good place to buy in. And you can see we had a nice progression higher. Not so sure I want to buy in at the top end, especially now that it looks as though the market might be getting a little bit shallow. Let's see, not even reaching the top end of the trading range anymore. If you did take this Falcon signal from here, this recommitment to the trend is probably a good reason to start rolling your stops in. So if you initially had a deep stop, you're probably going to want to roll it in at least to here. And if we see the buyers recommit one more time, then you should start to get very aggressive with your stop. All right, so here now on the Falcon, we got one more green bar. Ideally, I like to see two bars move in my favor. But you could make a, a case that if the market fails at this point, well, it's going to take out this low as well. So the, the choice is yours. But at the very least, you want your stops here around 4340. All right. Now I would move my stops here at 4343 ish and hopefully the market will continue to rally from there. And then if it does reverse, well, at least you've reduced your risk exposure. Right now I'm watching the eagle. We're producing another green bar cell. Or at least the warning dot to a green bar cell. This one, as it prints, assuming the triangle hash mark don't absorb the warning dot, we should actually be able to flip the ATR over. So I'm going to be a little bit more aggressive on this one. I'm going to take it early, and I'm going to try to risk it up here. What I'm hoping for is that by taking the trade early and not making it turn over the ATR, you see, if I wait until, let's say this trade's lower, it's going to flip the ATR over now. 
right? So our ATR will end up up here. This now becomes my signal bar. Well, if my entry is not until here, my profit target is going to be down below these lows. So I'm planning on an earlier entry to hopefully get me to my profit objective as the market retests the lows. And we're getting a second push on this signal also. Hmm. The buyers are scaring the sellers off. All right, well, we can cancel that order. Okay, notice here on the Hawk, the Hawk's giving us a pretty good picture. See how the market is starting to lose some upward momentum? See how each consecutive leg higher is starting to drift sideways? They're no longer going higher. We're starting to go sideways now. All right, so... The Raptor has given us, we're working our test of the extreme. If this high continues to stay below this high and we produce a sell signal, that could well be a, a, a soft edge sell. Technically, it would be a soft edge sell, even though the cloud is very, very thin. It's not like a nice, big, fat cloud like this one is. Hmm. Every time I look to short it, the buyers show up. All right, well, here comes the first micro macro cross signal. Uh, we do have structure here. You know, to take this trade, you pretty much got to risk it down to here. Again, the thing is acting a little bit wonky, so I'll throw a onesie in, and I'll adjust it as the trade moves lower. So here we are, we're sneaking up on the trend line support again. And now we're into yellow bars, so we can leave that one alone. Oh, here comes our red bar buy signal, and here comes our sell signal in the eagle. We've got our warning dot. I know that the signal will produce right there. Oh, for crying out loud, I'm just going to short it at the market because it's running away and we'll get a stop in here no that won't do no that won't do either there we go
Okay, not quite sure why my trade manager didn't just engage a uh, signal there for me. I've been having a little bit of difficulty. Uh, my charts did not want to load correctly this morning. So I'm thinking... I might need a little reboot, but I'll I'll bring this along manually. And my profit target's going to be down here. We'll go to forty three thirty two. There we go. Good morning, Derek. How are you? Haven't seen you for a while. Glad you could stop in. Actually, I'm going to hold my stop here above the high. Markets uh, trying to find a little direction here. We'll just leave that alone. We got our first micro macro cross signal here on the Hawk now. Sorry, I'm a little bit late on that one. And we're producing a trend change signal here on the Falcon. So a couple opportunities to get short. Let's see if I can catch a second push on this one. Oh, it looks like it will give me one. So the second push, again, simply um, allowing the signal to engage, see where the buyers and sellers are reacting, and then taking advantage of that current limit to enter the market. Oh, glad, oh, look at that, just scoundrels. See the late entry? The high probability profit targets are always based on your entry on the hash mark. Oh, they're going to tag me here at break even in a second. Notice, had I entered on the hash mark, we would have hit our high probability target, and then the market reacted to that level. But because I delayed my entry a couple of ticks, they left me hanging for a tick right there. Stinkers. Well, we're at break even, so we're technically playing with their dime. Ah, Derek says, I'm doing great. Saw you had a nice vacation. Yeah, we had a wonderful time. Friends of ours uh, have a place down in Loreto, Mexico. And uh, that's on the Baja, for those of you unfamiliar with that little community. It's very much a, well, I want to call it a retirement community. Yes and no. <laughs> There's people of all ages there, but... It's kind of like your golf course community. That would be a better analogy. And they've been after us for years to go down for a visit. And we finally did. And yes, it was beautiful. 100 degrees in the shade, three swimming pools. The food was amazing. We ate out every night and never had a bad meal. So one thing about the Mexicans, I, I don't think they have <laughs> really good refrigeration, so everything's got to be fresh. <laughs> but no, it was great. Everybody was really nice. And traveling in that part of Mexico, I can get by with my rusty restaurant Spanish, but um, <laughs> they're all fluent in English over there, so that helped. All right, so big move lower. A uh, nice first micro macro cross, great follow through. And we could kind of see that one coming too. See how the market broke the trend line here, our, or our trend channel, if you will, which it had respected for, oh, about three, four hours, three, three and a half hours. And then it starts getting shallow. It starts coming up short. And then it breaks the bottom. Well, you can almost see the momentum 
the upward momentum draining out of the market. That's why I didn't hesitate to take this eagle short. I wanted in this eagle short, even though as I set up the trade, remember the market just slipped past me a little bit. Well, I punched in at a, at a market order regardless. I did not want that one getting away from me. Oh, that's why I didn't have a trailing stop. I forgot I went in with a market order. So when you see that kind of thing happening, when you see the momentum leaving the market, then, you know, don't hesitate. Get in there. Get in there with something, even if it's just a onesie. Because that is as close to a crystal ball as you're going to get in trading. All right, here's crude oil. Speaking of bearish momentum, here's crude oil on the Falcon now giving us a signal right here. You can take it on the hash mark. You can take it uh, below the low. This is also a market that is having uh, some serious downside momentum today. Technically, this is our trend change signal. I, ideally, I would like to have it above the swing high, but crude being so expensive, sometimes I just kind of need to split the difference. Or you increase your risk amount. You increase the uh, amount of your account you're prepared to risk. So maybe instead of 2%, you can go to 3 or 4 So long as you keep it under 5%. 5% or less, you're usually safe. And the reason everybody suggests 5% or less is because there's a very real possibility that you could take 10 stinkers in a row. Fortunately, I haven't done that, knock on wood, <laughs> but it is possible. Okay, so the NQ trying to react a little bit now to that uh, big move lower. The um, buyers starting to show up around the 43.30 mark. Where was our next support line? 43.16. So a very late reaction to the 43.34 area. Uh, 43.30, I believe, was near yesterday's lows. Actually, let me just check here. Yesterday's lows were uh, looks like right about there. So what's that? 43, 24, 25? Oh, and look at that. Right back down to yesterday's lows. So that's why we got a little bit of a hiccup. So unless the buyers muster a serious rally, we'll probably hang out and wait for another selling opportunity. I hope this big move down wasn't just a blow off. You know, sometimes when the market falls that quickly, it's because there's no <clears throat> the buyers are, are bailing out, taking profit, and the sellers or pardon me, the sellers are bailing out taking profit, just like we did. 
and the buyers are saying, well, shoot, the market's coming down. I may as well wait until it gets down to 43.25 before I buy it. So nobody's selling. And then all of a sudden you get the the end of your downward move. Well, we've got a couple of good trades in this morning already. The macro pullback teasing me here. If you're looking to take this macro pullback on the hash mark when it printed back here, here's the issue. Where are we going to cover this thing? We have very little structure. Yes, you could say this swing high here. It's not very prominent. This old support level and this support and resistance here, these two little swings, they're probably better. I would try to risk it probably to the crest here in the macro line. So you could go in with a onesie. And what that allows you to do is, I don't know if that was close enough to hit the break-even trigger or not. We'll say no. But what that allows you to do is it gives you some staying power. So even if the market decides to retreat up here to 43.38 or even 43.40 for that matter, remember it's not a loss until you get stopped out. So here we are printing multiple macro pullback signals all at the same price, all at 43.31. Price is contending with this little bit of a low. Um, I fully expect this low to yield and that will get this uh, profit objective. If I'm only going in with a single, sometimes I'll try to let it run out, especially if I think the market may have some downward momentum to it. But what happened to all our downward momentum? The market fell off briskly here, and now somebody just threw the brakes on. Somebody tossed the anchor out. All right, we also have a four arrow consolidation. So this is really the last chance now for the sellers. If your stop is up here, you may want to consider bringing it in a little tighter. Maybe not right over top in case we break it by a tick or two, but certainly you want it handier. Sideways is okay. We just don't want the market to keep producing sell signal, sell signal, sell signal, and not have any follow through. That is not good. So you could even draw the bear flag type look again. See how we're getting that. If uh, this bar closes lower, then I would start getting very aggressive rolling my stop down. If I can get a couple bars moving in my favor, then that shows me the sellers are trying to sell. There we go. So sellers are trying to sell. It's time to start bringing the stops in. And we hit our break even, and we hit our profit objective. Whew, boy, that was hard work. 
That was hard work for 50 bucks. How long did that take us? 10 minutes? Jeepers. It's almost like being on the clock. The key to this trade, however, was to give yourself a chance that the trade would work out. Now, in hindsight, we didn't need this big of a stop. Right? We could have gone in with a stop half that size, but we didn't know that when the trade started. There was a real possibility it could retreat to 4340. Sometimes trading is just about hanging in there long enough to let the market get to your profit target. Avoid the early stop out. All right, we're seeing more sensitivity now to these lows. So we know yesterday's low, 43.25. We've tagged it now a couple of times. Let's see what's going on on the Raptor. The Raptor hasn't shown us a soft edge buy yet. And I'm not all that keen on buying. I think the market, we are in a bear market today. But let's say this particular bar pivots and begins heading higher. Well, then we've had one, two, three hits on the 43, 25, 26 area. If we come back and we produce a buy signal, we may see a little bit of a rally, certainly enough to get a scalp out of it. Okay, so we're making lower lows. The Falcon producing a late filter entry signal. Note the trend line has not changed color. The filter has gone out of sync, come back into sync. This is a really a leap of faith type trade, especially if you're going to take it on the hash mark, which is going to be right here. Where in the world am I going to cover this trade? Well, let's try to cover it there. Oh, sorry, we don't have the signal just yet. Sometimes it's rare, but occasionally the Falcon will produce two warning dots. Well, here you can see the opposite. You produce two warning dots, and then on the third bar, you produce the triangle hash mark. You actually produce the signal. All right, so there's the signal. Oops. Now, the problem with entering below the low here is we're almost certain to see a reaction, right? Uh, entering on the hash mark, I would have gotten a slightly better entry because if it filled on the hash mark, it was almost certain to test the low. How do I know that? Well, we're getting lower highs, right? We're making lower highs. Um, and we keep testing the low, testing the low. It's reasonable to assume that if I fill on the hash mark, it's going to try to test the low. So I may as well fill uh, two or three ticks earlier. See, so here we are testing the low. Here comes yet another reaction. So far, we're holding our own, but the buyers are not leaving it alone. Uh, first micro-macro cross now in the hawk. Uh, same thing, though, we've got some serious sideways action going on here. So, you know, you need to leave your stop. I'm sorry, you got to put your stop far away or relatively far away. Remember how we saw the momentum draining out of the trade here to the upside? Well, I won't roll it all the way back, but I'm sure you remember. 
Well, now we kind of got a similar issue. This is what our little trading channel looks like. See how we're getting shallow? See how we're coming up short? Now that doesn't mean the market won't continue lower here. We're getting a macro pullback. We're right at the trend line. We're breaking the trend line ever so slightly. There's every reason to believe that there's going to be at least one more retest here. Is it a super high quality trade? Is it as nice as perhaps this signal here, this four arrow consolidation? No. Is it a valid signal? Yes. But we're really starting to lose some of that earlier bearish momentum that we had. Or so it seems. Okay, so our hawk now into yellow bars, so we can, oh, I didn't submit the order. Uh, so we can clear that. Looking for one more, one more press lower. And then I'm going to get a lot more aggressive with my falcon stops. They're trying. Well, at least we have some trades today. Yesterday was a rather quiet session. Oh, come on. Doggone it, the buyers are really dug in here. Okay, the sellers tightening up the range. Let's see how they're selling a little bit earlier. They're selling 43.30. All right, so now the sellers have made their their stand, if you will. I'm going to get more aggressive with my stop. If they fail again at this point, well, then I probably should take my stop out. And I'll leave my stop above this little itty-bitty swing high because 43.30 and 43.31, essentially the same value. Come on. Uh, if you've been following our crude oil trade, it finally, finally hit the uh, break-even trigger, and it's threatening to hit our profit target. 
Oh my goodness, we're really in slow-mo today. Alright, I'm going to get a little bit tighter now with my stop. Oh, that's a little too quick. That's one thing if you go with the bar high low strategy, it's a very aggressive strategy. You got to keep on top of it. Come on, crude. You're just kissing the profit target. Come on. Somebody get in there, take the other side of that order. <laughs> Somebody trade 4382 for crying out loud. Derek, you're not doing anything. Get in there. Buy 4382 for me, would you? <laughs> Come on. Oh, my. We're inching our way lower. Oh, by the way, if you uh, interpret this as a trend change signal, you would be correct. That is a trend change. Uh, Derek says he's been focusing on gold in the overnight. Yes, Derek is a bit of a night owl. Let's take a look here at gold. A gold is a great 24-hour market. You know, regardless of where you live, you can get some really nice signals off of gold because everybody is trading gold. It doesn't matter what time of the day or night. So here's the, <clears throat> here's midnight. Shortly after that, we get the London open. Uh, the trend change signal, we didn't get a rule of three. This would have been tough to catch early, but right about here, we get our trend change signal. This is on the eagle. Oh yes, look at that. It did have a very nice progression lower. So a little a little wavy, but a couple very nice legs to the downside. Then we get a trend change to the upside. So our clouds go from bearish to bullish. And well, I do believe that is enough to get to our profit objective. Oh, look at that. Just came up short. Gold is another market where I do tend to double the profit targets because typically their ranges are a little bit better. And gold looking like it's getting a little bit weaker this morning. Crude oil finally hit our profit target and we hit our break even trigger on the NASDAQ trade and it too is just sitting above our profit objective. Come on. You guys, you're killing me here. No, no, not the break even. <laughs> I need the money worse than the broker. There we go. Now you're cooking. Get down there. Oh, if I were smart, I'd take the $60. <laughs> Nobody's ever accused me of being smart. You can ask my wife. So every time the market tries to push a little bit lower, we get this little bit of a bullish uptick. And that's really putting a cramp in our downward 
bias today. Darn it. Should have taken the 60 bucks. I do it. Oh, well. A break even is better than a loss any day. But we've had some good trades and we're only 45 minutes into the session. Actually, what have we done? Have we done four for four? See, if I'm doing, here's a reason why you want to have a trade quota. Uh, typically, I'm looking to take two, well, anywhere from two to four trades a day. If the market is really behaving, and you, trust me, you'll know when the market is really behaving. Everything, the signals will just be crystal clear. The setups will be textbook, and you're going to get, you know, just signal after signal after signal. I think the most I've ever traded in a session was 10 trades. And out of those 10 trades, I think I had two losers and eight winners. But here is why you want to have a trading quota. So we've only taken a handful of trades this morning. Okay, sorry, we didn't take a Hawk trade. Uh, we had a, a really good Eagle trade, right? So we made a couple hundred dollars on that. Don't think we had a Raptor trade. No, nope, no Raptor trade yet. And our Falcon trade, so there's 220, 110, so we're up 330. And then we have our crude oil trade for another $200. So there's $530 for the morning. I don't see any point in risking that. You know, unless you're trading a larger account and you're looking for a four-figure day, the $550, that's a pretty good day. Now, there's nothing wrong with shooting for a four-figure day. Just means you have to hang out a little bit longer. But the point is, we took four trades, three winners and one break even. Uh, we're up $500 and change. The more we trade, every time we trade, we introduce the possibility of a loss especially if the signal is a lower probability signal, especially if the signal is one that we're taking because we're bored. We're sitting here, the market's not doing anything, and then all of a sudden we say, oh, hey, look, this looks like it's a soft edge buy. I'm going to buy in. Never mind that it's not a soft edge buy. Never mind that we're already late on the signal. You go ahead and you hit the buy market button because you're bored, and what happens next? Well the market falls off and all of a sudden you've taken a $200 hit or maybe worse a $300 hit or maybe worse still a $500 hit. So all your hard work uh, for the morning, you know, you're just chipping away at it. And I'm not talking down to anybody. We've all had sessions, I can tell you from painful experience, days where I'm up you know, a thousand dollars, and I finished the day in the in the red because I didn't have the sense to stop trading. I thought I thought I had the tiger by the tail. Yeah, I had the tiger by the tail, all right. The tiger turned around and ate my lunch and then some. So, a trading quota is a great way to avoid over trading. A lower quota is much, I think a lower quota is less stressful. You know, if you start the day and you think, okay, I'm only looking for two trades today or three trades today, you can be very picky. Hey, I've only got a three trade quota. I got a signal that I don't like. I don't have to take it. 
I'm only looking for three trades. I've got, you know, from now until the next four hours to find three trades. Surely in f five or six hours, I should be able to find a half decent looking trade. Yeah, like Derek says, you know, those, those days when you're, uh, you're up 500 or 1,000 or a lot of money, whatever a lot of money is to you, and then you lose it or you put a, a big dent in it. Derek says those days are mentally exhausting too, and he's right. Oh, my gosh, I still remember the time $880 I lost, which, you know, in the big scheme of things is not that much money, but I did – something stupid and it bothered me all week but I didn't do that stupid thing for a very long time after that so <laughs> I suppose that was good okay the market um, trying to get a change in direction I'm still a little bit more bearish than bullish even though the buyers are showing a lot more effort you see how we're introducing more yellow bars see so compare that to what we had here nice progression lower yeah okay yellow bar it's all right it happens the market was moving sideways dipped a little lower another yellow bar Ooh, another yellow bar Ooh. More yellow bars. So we may be seeing a little bit of a transition. I'm not convinced it's enough to get overly aggressive on the buy. Now I know you're looking at this and you're saying, well, Eric, that's a first micro macro cross to buy. Should I buy that? Okay, I'm going to show it to you guys. Um, but like I said, my day would be done. If you're going to take this trade, you pretty much need to risk it down here below the low and what I would do is I would probably allow it to run out so you can take your nix your profit target um, the reason you need to risk it below here is because we haven't seen a real good test of the extreme yet have we so there's certainly a possibility that the market can move higher there is room up here after all you know, we've had this nice little progression lower, and we've got some selling resistance right there. So we do have some room, certainly for a decent-sized scalp, but a full-blown reversal and move higher? No, I don't think that's realistic. Is it a first micro-macro cross signal? Yes. Is it a high probability signal? Yes. But at the same time, you can't ignore everything to the left. That's a, a mistake that some traders will make sometimes, is they'll focus entirely on the signal. And that's not always a bad thing, but you can't ignore everything that's going on over here. So our scalping target, we would have hit our scalping target. I'm going to throw in a scalp profit target right here at 43.34 or let's go 30 yeah sure 43.34 now you could start to roll your stop below here, but remember, if this market is transitioning into an uptrend, this doesn't really look like a test of the extreme to me. Okay, now, as it gets closer to your profit objective, typically at 80%, about 80% of the way to the profit target, I will force the trade to break even. So I was just about to hit the break-even trigger. Uh, 
Well, looks like the buyers are showing up after all. Forty-three forty could be a little bit of a problem. When uh, I normally recommend that if you're taking what is obviously a counter trend signal, take your profit. Don't try to. I did run this one out a little bit further uh, than the regular scalp target. So the regular scalp target was right here. We ran. I ran it out a couple ticks more. What did we get on that one? So I got picked up another three ticks. But you know the markets don't turn on a dime, right? So we know also that the market is favoring a downtrend today. I think that's fairly obvious. We have the big open gap to the downside. The market has continued lower from there. I think it's fairly safe to assume that it, we're in a downtrending market. Well, as I said, the markets don't turn on a dime, and the buyers don't always have enough effort to actually turn the whole market. Uh, sometimes what will end up happening is you'll just end up being in a, a trading range, just up and down, up and down. Well, obviously in a trading range, you're not going to get a protracted profit. So you may as well scalp out for your profit or set some sort of profit target. Now what we're seeing is a reaction to this resistance here. So the market traded up to 43.35. And now the sellers are trying to knock it back down, which is, of course, what we would expect. has also hit the skids, drifting a little bit sideways. We're back into the hard edge now on the Raptor and the Eagle, which we might have anticipated. Hmm. I'm wondering whether or not the buyers are really going to muster a rally here. We should see the sellers trying to knock them down at least one more time. Oh, by the way, we did get a trend change signal here in the Falcon, I just noticed. And all the same things would apply. Everything that I just told you about the Hawk, the exact same things apply here.
All right, so the seller's trying to knock him down a little bit, working on a possible late filter entry signal. So far, this whole resistance area from this morning around the 43.35 price range still holding. All right, this is a little riskier with this macro pullback signal, but if we get a late filter entry here on the Falcon, I might be persuaded to buy. Here on the Raptor, we're also seeing the beginning of a cloud crossover. I guess the key is to get above 43.36. Just waiting. Oh, my gosh. <laughs> So you can almost see the transition. The Hawk looking a little bit bullish. The Falcon definitely looking bullish. The Raptor transitioning, fairly neutral right now. We've got a bearish cloud and a slightly bullish cloud. And then the Eagle, of course, into the hard edge. Okay, getting another green bar cell here on the Eagle. It's against the ATR, same issue as before. It's a little bit of a matter of logistics. If we wait for the ATR to flip over, well, we're going to be entering here, and then we need to deal with the low of the day. In that instance, you may choose to get in the signal a little bit earlier. Can you cover it up there? Nope, can't cover it quite that high. Can I cover it to the crest in the band? Yes, I can. Let's just shoot a couple of trend lines here.
So here's our little bit of a trend channel that we're looking at. Now we're getting a red bar buy in the hawk. Okay, now this is looking more like a, a retest of the lows. So the red bar buy, remember it's our counter trend signal. We can buy it with trend. Or actually what I'm going to do is I'm going to do it like this and risk it below the low. So we can buy it with trend and look for the market to retest the highs. In this case, we've got a lot of room for the market to try to retest the highs. The only little problem we have is this little hiccup right there. But it's starting to adopt the shape of a bull flag. So you might see the market break out this way. Um, but again, there's very little structure here. I suppose we could have risked it below the curve here in the macro line. We'll see how that works out, but ideally below the low is best. Now the red bar buy, you can also short. So here's the signal. You can also look to sell the failure of it and look for the market to continue lower to retest these lows. So that's where the stop would be if we risk it to the crest of the macro line. And so far that's holding. But I honestly think given the overall flavor of the day, we might be better off looking for selling opportunities. You can see now our first micro macro cross is starting to develop. All right, we've got a couple of bars moving in our favor. Um, could be time to start rolling that stop in a little. I, again, I don't want it so tight that if the you know the market breaks the low by a tick or two, that it takes me out. But we have seen the buyers choose to step in here around the 4325 mark and if that number sounds familiar to you it should because we've been watching that level all morning that's near yesterday's lows Okay, now I would recommend you have your stop here, but you know what, just for kicks, I'm going to roll it here and see if the contract lows don't keep us in this trade. This is how you learn stuff too, by experimenting and making notes, playing the what if game, what if I did this?
as I've mentioned to you before, sometimes all you need to realize a profit is to keep your stop out of harm's way. <clears throat> Notice this swing low, right? If a lot of traders would have stuck their stops right there, and look what happened. They got tagged by for a tick or two. That's why I tried to have my stop a little bit deeper. I had it here 43.23 half. Because I don't want to get tagged for a tick and then see the market reverse and go up to my profit target. Now that we're getting to our uh, closer to our profit objective, uh, anytime we're about three quarters of the way to the profit target, I'll be looking for uh, an opportunity to roll the stops, hopefully to break even. But I'm glad that worked out that way. That's That was a very good real-time example of how you don't want to strangle your trade. See, traders are tricky. Everybody knows where the stops are. Everybody knows. It, it, it's not rocket science, right? Everybody knows the anxious trader is going to start rolling a stop right down there because he's scared. He may have started with his stop back here or even here or even down here, but as soon as he sees that little swing, okay, time to roll. And then what happens is the market stops him out and then, of course, continues higher. That's why the trade manager is so helpful. It um, it allows you to control your risk so that you don't have to get anxious about a position. You don't have to be in a hurry to roll your stop because the amount you have in play is an amount you can afford. I'm starting to think trading range. I'm starting to think this market's going to keep flip-flopping. The bias is down, but the momentum, well, it's trying to shift. The buyers are trying to get a leg up. Here we had a green bar sell. This is the inverse of the red bar buy. You could set up to buy the failure of that. You want to structure it something like this. But I'm almost thinking we're going to see a range at the very least between 43.36, 43.25, or perhaps more likely 43. 19 to 4336 and of course trading within a range pretty much demands that you get in and out with profit when you have it. Crude oil continuing to trickle lower. Um, could have held on to that short a little longer, I guess. It looks like crude oil still destined to for lower prices. Same thing with gold. Gold also continuing to fall off. I wonder if those two are going to drag the NQ with it. I think we're going to see one more, at least one more little uptick here on the NQ, and then maybe another selling opportunity.
Okay, so we haven't done a Raptor trade yet. Let's see if the Raptor is going to give us this soft edge buy signal. And really all I'm looking at is this type of situation. And here's the fly in the ointment right there. Certainly, if we get above 43.36, well, the sky's the limit. <laughs> We've got some room. We got that big gap, remember? Last night, the market finished yesterday at 43.70, and here we are trading 40 points lower. Well, 50, yeah, 40 points lower, 43.30. Ooh, tight sideways congestion. There it is. All right, so we printed a soft edge buy signal. We're making a series of higher lows. Uh, we need to challenge this high. There'd be nothing wrong with waiting for the market to take out this high or even to wait for the second push on the signal, which is what you would be getting right now. You would know the current limit of the bar, and you could try to uh, buy in as it makes finishes on the high of the bar, 43.33. And we're trying to side with the buyers here. And keep our stop out of harm's way. So a little bit of a reaction now to the high. We definitely need to see the sellers, or pardon me, the buyers step up again. We can't let the sellers force the market too low or all bets are off. Again, though, it's a transition, right? If the market is going to try to move a little higher, it rarely does it on a dime. Okay, this high right here, very important, 43.33, 43.34. If we see the market trade up there, there's a very good possibility we're going to see a short-term rally. And the market probably trade back at least to this high, so around... 43.36. Let's take a look at our support and resistance lines, see where the next probable target would be. So 43.47. All right, if you say so. That would be a very nice little move. And just look at the sellers trying to knock it down, trying to defend that 43.33 area. Come on, buyers, get up there. This might be one of these trades that's going to take uh, 
an hour to unfold. <laughs> oh dear, come on, don't give up yet. I'm getting producing a couple more buy dots, warning dots. So things continuing to have a slightly bullish flavor. Come on, get up there. You know you want to. Oh, I would love to see um, a break here at 33. That will probably give it a little bit of uh, upward momentum because we know there's sellers defending, right? So we know their exit orders are sitting right here, just above the market. So if we can get into that, there'll be some pretty good momentum to the upside. Likewise, if we break here, there are a ton of orders here. If we break 43.36, uh, their market definitely has some room to move. Okay, not liking the, the breaking of the bottom end of the channel. Not liking that at all. And we did get a double pullback. Technically, this is a double pullback and a sell signal. So the Raptor flip-flopping a little bit on the signal. Mind you, my soft edge buy is a counter trend trade, so the with trend signal, I suppose, would be preferable. Yeah. All right. Well, it didn't work out. That's It was a higher risk trade, and I suppose after this attempt here, what I did wrong with this trade is when the market started to rally one more time and then it floundered, I should have been faster with my stop. I should have considered bringing my stop up instead of leaving it open like that. But we're seeing a lot of a uh, lot of sideways trading here, a lot of congestion. I'm thinking the market's going to be moving into a trading range. So if you're going to be hanging out and trading the rest of the session, um, it obviously has a downward bias, um, but we're stuck between the 43.20 and the 43. 36 area. Once we get outside of there, we've got some room, but you can probably expect a lot of sideways trading until then. All right, you guys, we're going to close up the room. Um, remember, tomorrow, Wednesday, is our open house, so I'll see you guys at the alternate venue. And uh, yeah, be careful. It's kind of a funny day today. The market should head lower overall, but um, the buyers are not going away. All right, we'll talk to you tomorrow. Bye for now.